For over a decade, Siraj al Hussein has been taking pictures of the mangrove. His photography documenting bird life in the Sundarbans is known throughout the world. His pictures reveal a mysterious universe. Here, over 300 varieties of bird live in an array of habitats. Dry forest, wetlands, mudflats and sandy beaches. One of the Sundarbans winged residents has captivated Sirajul's attention in particular. If anybody comes to Sundarban, the first thing will catch their eyes are the kingfisher. They are so beautifully here. Uh, they have beautiful color and they are very agile. They are very bold and strong birds. And almost whole day, they uh, stay on the branches and look at the canal, uh, catch fish. This canal is the kingfisher's territory and the solitary creatures are on a mission to defend it against other members of their species. They dive into the river to hunt and spend so little time underwater that when they come back out, their impermeable feathers are never even wet. You can also hear a very strong uh, voice there in the forest. They are very beautiful to listen to. And that actually uh, gives you the sense that you are in Sundarman. But I don't think anywhere else uh, you can hear so strong and so loud and beautiful bird song. But once we venture inland, the forest harbors an entirely different kind of wildlife. The mangrove forest is 114 million years old and for ages was completely free of human presence because it has great dangers in store for intruders. The shital, however, also known as the spotted deer, is harmless. It's one of the most common animal species found in the Sundarbans. There are some deer came to eat, a group of about 60, 70 deer. This place is full of, with cabra trees. You can see around the, all the trees. The lowest leaf are in the same line, like a haircut. This is because the deer actually they climb uh, on their hind leg and eat all the leaves uh, as far as they can. Here, the, the deer sometimes they they have another companion, companion which is the rhesus macaques, the only uh, primate in this forest. This uh, cabra tree has a small fruit, you know, round fruit, which is very tasty to monkeys. But when they eat, they drop many of the leaves and many fruits they drop in the ground. And deer normally they follow monkey and they, they take the fallen leaves and fruit. And this is somehow a natural connection between the deer and the monkey. But the unusual symbiosis that has developed between the deer and the macaques is mainly useful for defending against the same predator. Those cries are the alarm signal for the entire forest. For Sirajul, this unparalleled predator arouses as much fear as fascination. Even after more than 10 years, he's only managed to snap its photo once an extremely rare picture worth more than all the rest. So we were hearing this deer call, and this was advancing. And then some monkey started to, you know, making noise. And so we were just thinking that something is happening. So we told our boatman who was rowing with his hand to go faster. We were just going through the canal. Slowly I saw a, a head came, came out you know, behind the bush and slowly going 
and swimming across the canal. I took some shots, some of my friends also took some shot and shot and that is that was fantastic. That day, Sirajal took a picture of a Bengal tiger, Panthera tigris tigris, the largest big cat on earth. It was really a good feeling because getting a tiger photo in the wild uh, is very rare and uh, I felt great, I felt great. The Bengal tiger is more than just the symbol of Bangladesh. It plays a major role in the equilibrium of the mangrove forest. Perched at the top of the Sundarban food chain, the tiger feeds mainly on herbivores, regulating their populations and indirectly maintaining the characteristics of the entire ecosystem. But the Bengal tiger also protects the Sundarbans from one of its greatest threats. Humans, who for centuries steered well clear of the creature. Monirol Khan is hot on the tiger's trail. He's a biologist and studies the creature's habits and movements to ensure its protection. Bengal tigers are in grave danger of extinction. There are only about a hundred left in the Sundarbans. Like all wild cats, tigers hunt at dawn and dusk. They're practically invisible in broad daylight. Studying one of the largest predators alive comes with mortal risks. Monirul Khan never ventures into the mangrove without an armed guard. Professor, here are some droppings. I found some fur, look. Yes, those are tiger droppings. We see deer fur. These droppings are quite old. The fur tells us what the tiger ate. In the Sundarbans, we see very few tigers. I'm looking for the path this tiger took, the different behavioral signs that show us what it did, if it hunted, ate, rested, or walked about. Every track and sign a tiger leaves gives clues to its behavior. I'm noting this spot so I can locate it later on the map. These tigers have grown accustomed to the muddy, swampy climate of the Sundarbans and its forest environment. That's why they have no trouble swimming across a river that's two or three kilometers wide. Other tiger breeds can't swim that well. The Bengal tiger made this region its home 12,000 years ago and has perfectly adapted to the unique forest that grows here, half on land and half in water. <laughs> <laughs> 